What were we going to start with? The A and R, maybe. That's the name. Um, yeah, I mean, or you oh. could read the continuances. But I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. So we have two um, requests for continuance. Uh, one, which was the first item on the agenda, 258 um, Main Street. Main Street. Yeah. 258 Main Street and 260, 262 Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they have requested. Um, um, to continue the public hearing until the um, our next meeting on uh, January 14th. So moved. All in favor. So we are thinking we'll schedule that at 8:15 on the 14th. Sound good? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, our second item on the agenda <laughs> um, is another um, is for Johnson Woods, which we also got a um, request to extend until our next meeting. Um, so that same date of uh, January 14th. And we have we're thinking 8:45 for that. Okay. okay. Move the CPDC. Um, continue the here, minor amendment PUD special permit for Johnson Woods until Monday, January 14th at 8.45 p.m. Second. Those in favor? Opposed? All right. We have a, an a and R, another a and R on Family Circle. You did one. Just one like, mm, yes. yes, you did. <laughs> um, do you? Let's write yeah. a memo, and then Brad, if you want to explain, or I can explain. Um, uh, this is a and R on Family Circle. Uh, this whole uh, street um, was owned by the Zadi family, various members of the Zadi family. Uh, and so they didn't pay attention to boundary lines particularly, and they put a driveway in that encroaches onto someone else's lot. Now that mom and dad have died, they're looking to sell the house, the family wants that off. They've discovered that error. And they're looking to shift the lot line to make sure the driveway is on the proper lot. That which drives to the frontage issue, is they end up losing some frontage on one lot, so-called lot two in this plan, and another brother is giving up a piece uh, of his lot so it all works out they all have leaving frontage. And this is just designed to shift parcel B onto lot two and parcel A onto what's called lot becoming lot three C on that plan. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> because the driveway on lot C was actually built. Okay. Partially <coughs> in the other Is, I've forgotten whether we have a uh, setback requirement on the driveway. We do not. The, we do not. Okay. That was the only possible concern I found. Um, anyone else? Issues? I forget exactly what the um, result was, but didn't this come to us in September? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did we vote on it then? No, there was, it was a, a different a and different. for Family Circle. Yeah. They did oh. a land swap. Yeah, this, so it wasn't they the end up with the, with the no. pork chop. It's, it shows oh, this up is kind the, of in the top. In September, it was the top, and this is the bottom. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. Another right here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, move that the CPTC. Well, we don't need to. You endorse. Endorse. Move to endorse it, and then. Uh, approval not required for uh, 15 and 23 fam family circle and 400 Grove Street. Uh, second. All those in favor. All right. 
and so it's over the two copies of the plan are over on the table, so you guys will just need to sign it um, and date it. And then, and then Brad, you can take, we'll give you one to take with you, and we'll keep one. Yep. On the top right, I believe. Yeah. One date for everyone. One date for everyone. One and then there's just one copy of the surety. Yep. Right? And that's and that a mixed the packet, package. probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Which John has. Let's get it. There's a pin there? Yes. A special pin. You can't uh, use a regular pin. It's going to be a special pin. <coughs> Has to be the hundred year pen. Yes. Like this, this is it, right? After a minute. I usually don't get this. Oh, she's a Oh, cute. Oh, my God. I just did that during the day to make myself happy. You got a, like, I could not a curb or baby. I just did something in my mind. John's a developer. Nick is an architect. Rachel is a curb or baby. It's an urban planner. I'm just a guy who's been hanging around for 20 years. Nine. Seven. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, pairs. This is this is the magic, f very photogenic phase. Yes. So get them all. Yes. I know. I take so many pictures. Crazy time. Yeah. Oh, and actually, let's put up the first. Sorry, that the zoning update uh, chart this. that I made. South Main, near and dear. What'd you say? That's where I live. So is this why I'm here. That's this one. Yeah. Yep. So we'll talk about what we want to queue up for next year. If we want to queue anything up for next year. Master plan? <coughs> no. Master plan isn't us. Well, technically well, we have it is. A yeah, your yes. in our domain. It's technically your jurisdiction, but... Um, not it's a goal of this. Selectmen have said they don't want to work on it. Yeah, not, not it's not a goal, a goal this yeah. year. Um, <laughs> when it does come around, it's an expensive endeavor. Yeah. So that's, I think, part of it. We also have done a lot of planning, so we have a lot. We, we didn't, is the chart, do I have the chart? I probably have it done. We can talk about, right. we can talk about, like, we went through all the sections, and we, we've updated a lot of them sort of independently of a full-on master planning well, there's process. Da there's data from the, the town and from the state that can be right. Right. scooped in, and that's, to me, 40% of it. So... Release of surety. Um, does ever does is this the only copy? Yes. yes. All right. Um, um, did everybody sign the ANR? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And yep. Okay. And oh no. Oh yeah. Do I? Have to oh one? yes. That's it. Sorry. Oh. There's it, just four, right? It's just four. Yeah. Um, yeah. No problem. Yeah. That's sure. fine. And you signed both. Everyone. Yes. The four. Yeah. Okay. I'll still yep. grab that one. So here I went first because I knew. John would know what was going on. <laughs> Be able to say, no, you guys did it wrong. Fix this. <laughs> Uh, so this is a release of surety for Randall Road Extension, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. definitive subdivision from 2016, or last amended 2016. Basically, they're asking for their surety amount to be reduced because they've done um, some of the work. And the town engineer has agreed, they've come to an agreement on a number, um, and you guys just have to vote on it and, and sign it. So they want to release 146128 cents down to 62512 Um, if anyone's interested in the detail. 
Um, well, I have a couple good questions. Sure. Is it common for a development like this to take almost two years? I want to say this was back in January of 16 that it started. I believe no. it was approved in January of 7. Sorry. January of 17. I, well, what is the... It says the, here the I, I plan wrong. was dated September of 16 and revised through 12... But uh, December, uh, September to December. Yeah, I think 16th. it was approved in January 2017, and it's not uncommon for these things to take a couple of years. Okay, and the likelihood that we don't have a concern that they're just going to walk away and leave the town to take 62 and go finish it ourselves? No, and if and the whole point of this is that the town engineer has reviewed it. We use prevailing wage, okay. so they've calculated what we would need. Mm -hmm. to finish the job and this is that's what this amount is okay thank you sure. so move that the CPDC approve the bond release request for the Randall Road extension uh, as presented do I hear a second okay. All those in favor? Is this a, does this happen frequently? Yes, yes. almost every subject. I'm just wondering, I'm going to like um, a copy of the original budget. Oh, sure. Probably good, just so you can see yeah. the 146 part of it. I, I, I mean, I can see the documentation for the 62, but I just, yeah. Yeah, we can provide that next time. It's no problem. Um, so you will need to sign it. Isn't that included in the uh, Randall Road bond what, that, um, bond estimate? <clears throat> there are two columns. I assume column A adds up to 164, and the column B adds up to the 62. Uh, it's the unit price. That's not the... At one point, you um, were given the original yeah. estimate, and you did approve that. Um, I don't remember when that was. It might have been the middle of 2017. But next time, I can give you that when we do these releases, so you can see. I don't know where to sign. <laughs> I don't know where we sign. Is that not You sign the bottom. This, uh, oh, I usually have you sign this. I think this is a date here. It's a date, but then it's. Oh, you okay? Huh? I'll have to look at that. Am I missing the page? Okay. Uh, on the back. Mm -hmm. Well, that's okay. If I have to sign it, I will sign it. <laughs> Thanks. Do you want to do minutes? Sure. So we can talk about something. Sure. No, it's, it's on this sheet, Form M. Yeah, there's no place for the commission on that form. No, just the Director of Community right. Development. Yeah, I thought yeah. in the past I'd had you guys sign them, but... So, so just um, this... Uh, November 5th. And you should have minutes from September and October. Right, from the last meeting. If not, I might have some extra copies at my desk, but I thought we gave some to you guys. Your memory is still intact. <laughs> Mine's not. <coughs> well, I, I reviewed all of the minutes and found the only question I had was the minutes of, uh, I guess it's November 5th, the top yep. of page 7. It says the approved with a 4-1-0 vote. And I 
wasn't sure that I knew which order the numbers mm -hmm. are. Four zero one. It should that's, be four zero one. Yeah. That's what I thought. It was. I thought it was four. It be four, four. Abstain. And then negative. Right. It should be four zero one. Okay, so one one opposed mm -hmm. or one abstain abstaining. Opposed. Okay. Yeah. Good catch, Dave. Um, I had a change on page seven of October's notes minutes. And that is in one, two, the third paragraph. And I think the word should not be corrugating, but congregating. Did I know? Are these the ones I looked for? Are you sure? I don't have my initials on the right. She's talking about AMJM. Right there. Oh, this is kind of Oh, okay. Okay. And I looked at them. Yes. That's okay. Maybe we'll bring the October ones back to you guys next month. Because, yeah, I, I, I need to look at them again. make sure we're giving you the right version. Okay.
Move that the CBDC approve the minutes for the meeting of 17 September 2018. Ask for them. Which date, sorry? September. Yes. Second. All those in favor? Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of October 1st, 2018, as presented. I'm going to bring those back next time. I don't think those. I, I don't think I reviewed yet. them, but yeah. That Move that we defer. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have November 5th. Move that the CPDC approve the minutes of November 5th, 2018, as amended. Second. All those in favor? All right. Great. Okay. All right. So what's next? We we're going to talk about potential zoning bylaw amendments for 2019. Um, at this point, April's too soon, so it would be November we'd be like, planning for. Um, I made a little chart that was included in your packet that kind of shows like what we've done the last three years. Um, and then some ongoing efforts that are in green that are um, related to you guys but don't necessarily go to town meeting. Um, the design guidelines which are ongoing. Um, parking study recommendations which we're exploring um, the next steps on. And then um, we'll be starting an overhaul of the subdivision regulations in 2019. I'll be working with the town engineer um, and other staff closely on that. So those are things we'll be doing in the office um, that will be, we'll get your feedback and review and we'll probably have, um, you know, some public hearings. Um, and then we have zoning bylaw challenges. Um, so, I kind of did list them over on this far right column in the order that I thought maybe the sign bylaw has been talked about for many years now. Um, so that maybe rises to the top of the list. Um, but we also have some opportunities on South Main Street, some properties that are turning over, some zoning challenges that have been brought to our attention. I made a little presentation I'll show you after this. Um, so we're thinking it might be a good time to look at the zoning down there, see if there's something we can do to uh, make it easier um, and try to get more of what we want down there. Um, and then parking requirements could be updated. Um, based on some the new parking utilization information that we have. Um, footnote one, which I don't know if this board is aware of. It says the zoning board um, is aware of it and the building commissioner. It's a footnote. Uh, I have the bylaw. Oh, of course. It's a footnote to the table of uses. It shows up in a couple places and is, has been very challenging for staff to interpret. We've had to have town council involved on almost every application. Um, there it is. I'll make it bigger. It's this note right here. Um, and this begins with in a residence district. Is it big enough? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Which which table is it? Is this? So it's actually in both um, residence district and then business residence and a business A. So it's in both tables. Mm. Okay. There's table of dimensional control 6.3 so this is table 5 table of uses okay the tables in section 5 um, so what's the challenges yeah. with the, the number of habitable <laughs> principal challenge rooms, so that's actually the, the easy part yeah <laughs> um, Glenn can go out and determine you know what the existing foundation is and what the existing rooms are um, the challenge is 
alter, the, how to define alter, um, whether the alteration is going to be so extreme that it actually results in that rooms no longer existing, whether developers can add on to the house in such a way that they can maintain the external appearance of a single family dwelling but create two units and how much we allow them to add on, it's, um, th I, the challenges are many and varied. So it's very subjective. What is that note attached Which? to? The whole table? It's attached no. to, uh, yeah, the two family. Um, it's, it's Which doesn't work in a zoning in, right? The ZBA deals with black and white. Right, I mean, if something like that came so to our this board, board, we might be able well, to. Well, so the zoning board doesn't board. actually deal with this either, because this is by right. Residential. It's if they can prove they have eight dwelling. habitable rooms prior to 1942, they can by right uh, create a two-family. Um, okay. But it's at, right. It's asking it's, for an it's interpretation. It's extremely of, yeah. subjective. Yeah. It's makes yeah. very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Town yeah. council yeah. thinks it's a lawsuit waiting right. to happen, and we agree. So because yes, yeah. yeah. so, right. we have one developer right. that okay. sees what well, another developer thing. did yeah. down the street and comes up with like a, the similar plans, but yeah, yeah, it's been very tricky. We, we actually we have a couple that I'm uh, that I've looked at on Street View recently and been like. Oh wow! It actually still does look like a single family. I can even find the second door, even though I know that I looked at the plans and the second door. You know, I know where yeah. the second door is. It's like it. So we've done a pretty good job, I would say. But it does. It creates a lot of conflict at the counter. Um, it's. It, it's. We usually have to. We have a lot of clever developers who are trying to find ways to get as much out of things as they can while still quote unquote retaining. So we have people that want to take down three of the four walls. Well, so does that mean the rooms still exist? And then they may need to redo the floors once they get in. So it's, yeah. it doesn't look like it even says that you have to have eight when you finish it. No, it you can have more than you, those yeah. eight need to. Yeah. No, but it doesn't even say that. Just as like the, who's eligible has eight in 1942, period. Right, so yeah. we've gotten guidance that that's supposed to mean that, that those remain and that See, the structure is not that at all. That way, the structure is altered beyond which houses are eligible to be must start turned into a two family. Does it doesn't say right, it. right, but but the, we've so the we've gotten guidance over that the, the yeah. intent of this was to preserve those large eight. structures in town and not alter them so much so that they a don't look like a single family and b yeah. don't look like that old character that we wanted to preserve when this photo yeah. was put in place. So it's, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with you. It's just we've had many different um, things um, come up. At so, one point, I thought there was a limitation that you could only extend the current dwelling by approximately one third. So that's it. maybe what you're thinking of as accessory apartment? Uh, no, I was looking at it about 20 years ago when I'm going, okay, what can I do with my house? <laughs> and it was before 1942. It only had six, maybe seven rooms, so I, it wasn't there. By going through it, it was a list of you had to have eight rooms. You could extend, you could expand it such that you could increase the f gross floor area, and I want to say by about a third at most. So you couldn't make it a, a hugely yeah, bigger yeah. house. Uh, plus, a lot of these properties, I assume 1942, probably don't have that big a lot. So you'd be limited to your 25 foot, 25% uh, coverage to begin with, mm -hmm. and that would limit you. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. and the original, I thought, was that yes, you could, you could gut the entire interior, add on your add on the back, but at the end of the day, looking at that house, it has to look like a single family. So, with regards to gutting the interior. Um, at a certain point, so like uh, you can't raise the structure because then you no longer have the structure with the eight habitable right. rooms. So that's another challenge. It's like how much can it be altered and, and still be considered that, that this footnote will apply yeah. to it. Um, so 
The one third applies to accessory apartments. At best. And, uh, you know, we don't always agree with yeah, the advice we're given. We don't always <coughs> ten years ago, the the and I don't always agree with each other. Yep. We don't always agree with the developers. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely an, it, uh, it's an issue that we need better clarity than a footnote in the table of uses. Right. Like, or, so I don't didn't know if anyone on this board would remember, like, you know, we've... We believe the intent is to preserve the old big houses in town um, that don't aren't on the historic inventory or in a district or something like that. But if anyone else has any information about the origins of this, um, the feeling we're getting from town council though is that we probably just want to get rid of it. Well, the because of the subjective nature. Yeah, I mean. I mean, yes, we could also clarify it. Um, it into its own direction. But mm -hmm. is there a two-family conversion section? No. Well, that seems <clears throat> like a valid addition to the zoning. Do we just have to be very, very clear um, about what we're allowing? So that's just something food for thought. You don't have to make any decisions yeah. tonight. Um, yeah, the April 42 is the, the advent of zoning, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, so in Reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about that, like, spit a month, <laughs> not just here. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and so right. If, if you'd like, I can enumerate the various challenges um, for the next come. meeting. Um, there's been just so many, I can't even. Yeah, I mean, that, I'm not sure. Call them all off the top. Yeah. And I would rather that the town council draft something knowing what because we don't have any idea of where it's been challenged. Guidance. I, I can compile all the feedback we've gotten from him. Um, I mean, I don't understand why they're why this is uh, problematic because the wording is very specific. You want to come work in town hall? <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, it says specifically, in a business A district or in the other residential districts, a single family dwelling existing prior to April 1942, which at that time had at least eight finished and habitable principal rooms, may be altered. And you can put a period. <laughs> uh, but the, then right, the, the problem maintaining is maintaining the appearance of a single yeah, family. I, and it shouldn't be right. We shouldn't have zoning where it would be fine if someone, if that came to a board like ours, where we deal with that all the time and make those sorts of decisions. But on whether it's in the character of the neighborhood, right? That's we do that. Right. Um, that's not the zoning. That's that's not the building inspector's um, uh, role, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't have zoning that sets that role up for him or her. I mean, I suppose if you're, we could make it something that comes to you guys. Although I caution that we don't generally deal with single and two family structures. Right. So that's another. I'm not sure about the legality of that. Um, the, so it's the how much alteration is allowed before the house no longer actually qualifies for the footnote. Um, and then how much alteration mm. is... Well, no, the thing is... Uh, Dave, we could go on all night. Not, <laughs> I, I, I've got probably 20 pages of interpretations from town council on this for yeah, uh, but, 10 different but there's, applications. There's two separate things. One is so. the qualified for the footnote, which should be crystal clear. Yep. And whether they conform to the result conforms to it is a different, a separate question. So, food for thought. There's my own chart. But having exa some examples of the the issues sure. that people have um, With presented <laughs> would would be helpful because right I mean there's there may be something there where that is important I, right this board certainly hasn't given it any thought because right? we didn't know it was an issue but whether it should exist whether we care whether what's the repercussion of um, of that going away um, does it does it limit 
right. does it just turn everyone to the accessory apartment um, right. um, option? Option. Right. Is that mm. what we want, anyways? Right. Is that the right thing? Well, so yeah, that's exactly <clears throat> the kind of conversation I was hoping to have. I was hoping you guys would be like, "Oh, the reason that's that we have that is for this," and, <laughs> and then it would just be like, "Okay." And, Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. No, <that's> okay. <laughs> um. Well, that's the thing where the, uh, we should be able to actually create an inventory. Well, I guess we should be doing a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have an inventory of, um, we, we, have, we do have an inventory. Um, okay, so we have the omission from the lot shape definition, which doesn't account for lots on the cul-de-sac bulb and the strange angles. Um, that we probably should clear up. Um, that came up on the okay. Grove Street mm -hmm. subdivision. Mm -hmm. so I'm sure it'll come up on others. Mm -hmm. um, we've been asked to revisit accessory apartment um, by some people who've utilized it, uh, some architects and um, homeowners on the zoning board. Um, there's some issues with it. I need to sort of look into them a little more closely. This is the one that just went to town hall, town Two meeting a few years, years ago. ago. Yeah. I think okay. April 2017, yeah. So, because um, you know, as hard as we try, there's always mm -hmm. things yeah. we have to keep <laughs> tweaking. Um, and then there's some ones that have been on the list for a while, like planned unit development, use changes, um, I don't know if actually that's been on the list for a long time. I think planned unit development has since before I worked here, but um, use changes was more about like looking at that new crossing road, Walkersbrook area, and thinking about what we might want there and whether we need to tweak the zoning. Um, and at, related to that is the floodplain issue, um, which I don't know if I ever talked about with you guys. Mm. Our floodplain regulations are extremely restrictive, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but they cover a lot of our new crossing road um, Walkersbrook area. So if we ever were to have some redevelopment there, um, we'd, I mean, the first step would actually be to modify the floodplain regulations and um, so that something could happen. Can you just, what's the difference between floodplain and wetlands? Because I know that there are official wetlands over in that area. Right, so the wetlands regulations are, um, they're regulated by the Wetlands Protection Act, which is right. state regulations. Floodplain um, is a little more flexible. You can develop in the floodplain. Um, there's some, you know, I've seen, there's different types of ways to build in a floodplain. You know, you might raise it above base flood elevation. You might allow for pass-throughs for water. You have, if you fill an area, you have to provide flood storage somewhere else. Like, it, they're not as necessarily as restrictive as Wetlands Protection Act um, hmm. regulations. Maybe you can, do you, can you chime in more That's good, yeah, that? that's exactly, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, every town you go into has a different way of, of dealing with it. I guess the, um, and not having developed in Reading personally, I, I don't, I don't know. Right. I'm not sure. I mean, in principle, I mean, the wetlands is protecting the habitats and the uh, wildlife, if you will. The, whereas the floodplain is you know, resource management, or, or loosely. And given the existing and future environment <laughs> that, that all the scientists tell us we're headed toward, it's probably not something we should get rid of, but make sure that it's flexible enough so that we can do what what we what can. Right, so like yeah, right so now, the way the floodplain <coughs> regulations are, like nothing can happen down in that area. So that's very counter to that being a priority development yeah. area. So. <laughs> um, and I know that the, some of the business owners down there pay exorbitant flood um, insurance, yes. um, and they're kind of stuck because the properties will not transfer if anyone does their due diligence, because nothing can happen. Mm -hmm. um, no one specifically contacted me about like buying the frame site or anything like that, but I just, you know, if they did, I would point them to our flipping regulations. And, um, but the insurance isn't 
an issue we would deal with. No, we don't deal no. with insurance, no. So That's they're on the floodplain, they're paying the insurance, period. They're paying huge yes. floodplain fees, right, But they're and they're kind of stuck with the building they have mm -hmm. in the exact formation that it's in and the use that's there. Right. Um, right. So it's not even like they can really do anything else with the property either. Right. Um, so that's the trick. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm trying to see. Um, um, use is permitted as of right in the floodplain overlay district. No new building shall be erected and no premises shall be used except for one or more of the following uses. Municipal recreation, public water supply, drainage or flood control, orchard, truck garden, nursery, or similar open use of the land for the raising of agriculture and horticultural crops, for rifle, pistol, and shotgun shooting on the land of any established range. <laughs> that is what we allow. Bring back um, so, so yeah, so no <laughs> compensatory storage, right? So right, what you said, you just can't do anything, right. Right, really. You can't engineer your way out of it, which Right. Yeah. We, I would think we should think about whether that's appropriate or not. So, just to, I know that there's lots of moving pieces on that area, mm -hmm. but knowing how long these things take, should we move those two up to be? Well, I think that's the discussion we're having right now. Okay. Is yeah. what right. of these what the, of these things? The what's yes. the there's a, So there's a lot on this list. I realize that in the sign dialogue in and of itself, it's like an enormous undertaking. Uh, I, I've got to say that I don't think we should tackle the sign bylaw. Okay. Um, we spent um, a lot of time um, <laughs> in the past um, um, on two different times, right? One to try and tweak the actual what was allowed to be put up, and the other was to make sure that it conformed with the um, with the latest um, Supreme Court um, ruling. And I guess my take is, um, I think that we're in a pretty good place in terms of what we're getting out of it. Um, it, it may be cumbersome for else someone else to read and follow, but um, we've got things, I, I think, that are on that list that are hampering people from developing or, or we're ending up with some development that we don't want, or, or, which I think is much more important than, I know this is going to sound anti, you know, not business friendly, but, um, but you know, having some engineer not be able to read the, the know what opaque is. Come on, you know, we've got more important things. <laughs> Because it still happens. New sign. Just the past couple of months. Where? It's black, but it's not opaque. Where? Uh, um, um, uh, between the one of those buildings between uh, the car wash and Washington Street. On that nail side of the street. Salon, no, it's not nail salon. It's house? like a, um, oh. is it like an insurance oh, company yeah. or something? Or, or rehab? Or do you know I don't know. for this? It's the brick building. It's in business A. Maybe? Is, yeah. is it on Main Street? Yeah, it's a black. Yeah, I mean black like background, but it's not opaque. Okay. <laughs> 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 We will look into it. So enforcement is the biggest issue right. with the sign really. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So, okay. So that's just my take, of, you know. I, yeah. Well, I mean, I, if we're going to do anything with it, we need a, a list of issues or things, that, you know, issues that have come up. We spent an enormous amount of time on the, what we have. And it seems to work pretty well <laughs> in terms of results. Okay. So that. And where it doesn't, it ends up being. I mean, it's not a. It no. ends up being enforcement. Yeah. Issues and right, you can't spend 
all that time chasing people's... I think there's some people in town hall that think we should just get rid of it entirely and just get a one-pager. Just keep it really simple. Same. I do not agree. <laughs> Is it no signs no. allowed? No signs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just not regulate it in a, I don't know how many pages ours is. Or just, you know, go straight Nantucket. Like, it has to all look exactly the same. <laughs> so, yeah, there's many different ways. I don't like it. It's simple. It's right. <laughs> or Main Street Hyena. It is gray right. with blue or yellow, yeah. period. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I mean, in the same thing, I think that things that we know take time, but will have um, some consequences that are on the sooner horizon. So South Main Street and the two pieces that would impact Walker's Brook, mm -hmm. knowing that it could take us a year and a half to get these things in order, right. I think would be good. And then I, on the flip side, knowing that we just did the accessory apartments. Like, I would say give it another give it year time. of yep. stuff That's good getting advice. thrown at yep. you to get more information. Uh, okay. And on that same, that, that same vein, um, unless there is something specifically that we know is not working relating to parking, um, that I think that it's not ripe at the moment. I think it will be very, very ripe in about a year from now. Yeah. Um, and we'll know, we'll we'll know more about the needs. Right. Because I think right now we'd be guessing. Right. Okay. And actually, we do keep working. We are looking into like other recommendations we can do to help with downtown parking. Um, so yeah, that's not uh, probably shouldn't be so high on the list. Um, so. Sh should I go through some of the challenges that we've um, sort of have been brought to our attention with South Main Street? All right. Um, so I just threw this together today. So um, just switch seats. Yeah, you sure. can, can take notes for me. All right. Oh, it feels good to be back in my own seat. <laughs> All right. So. Um, Some of you were around for the Economic Development Action Plan um, when South Main Street, which is over, you know, highlighted in red, that corridor, was called out as a priority development area. And there's two sections of it. Um, so at that time, there were, I don't know, many different public hearings. Um, and the report came out and said mixed use and multifamily housing were supported by the community and I'm thinking also supported by boards. Mm. Does right. that sound correct? Excuse. So I can read this real quick too. It says, um, "Can you blow it up a tone? Uh Yeah. Torch. And can you orient? Is what? What's the T at the bottom? Is that Washington Street or is that somewhere? It, that's right so before the one. interchange, I think. So South Street. South Street. South Street, right here, maybe. Um, is there a way to blow this? I don't know if you can see on the PowerPoint. PowerPoint yeah. Well, so I'll just read. It says, the market potential for this area is mixed use that can blend into the commercial already located in downtown Reading. The addition of residential in PDA number 2B, which is the southern section, um, in the central and southern portions of the corridor also holds some promise for increasing the customer base that is needed to support future retail growth. Feedback provided during public meetings indicated support for commercial, including retail, on the first floor with residential uses above. Um, so. But can I interrupt you for a second? So that's all about the market. It's not about. It's not about no, anything that, right. we, I mean, no one said no, we shouldn't do that. But right. Well, I so it's that last sentence I was kind of referring to the feedback during public meetings indicated support. I mean, that's not like strongly supported right. or yeah. just indicated support. So more outreach needed. Well, I, I guess I'm just thinking. I'm not sure that you know um, that I would be all that in favor of focusing residential development along our one right. commercial corridor. Right. Yeah, okay. So I yeah. thought that you would say that, actually. Nice <laughs> I mean, I agree uh, with yes, you. Yes, I just yes. always kind of look at everything with the terrible parking out front. And right. I think 
what if you just put, you know, two stories of apartments right above it? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I actually no thought that you there. would say that, because you don't necessarily need the town to be entirely one zone. Um, so... Uh, Are we that predictable? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good for me, though. Okay. It's good for me. Didn't I say that? Mm -hmm. I said they're going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> This is also from the EDAP, um, where it estimates the redevelopment potential at 12,000 square feet additional commercial and 200 plus additional dwelling units um, if you use mixed use or multifamily development scenarios. So, um, all right, so then I just kind of summarize what's going on. So, this is a high visibility corridor gateway to Reading. We have a decent number of vacancies along Main Street. Aesthetics aren't great. Um, there's a lot of signage, minimal landscaping, lots of curb cuts. Uh, really, do no interconnectivity between the lots once you're in them. Um, kind of inefficient. And there's one bonus I would say is there are a variety of uses though. Um, and the zoning that's in place allows for a variety of uses. So I highlighted just a few. Multifamily, restaurant, retail, professional services, institutional. Um, so like currently in business A, we allow multifamily and we also allow. So we basically allow mixed use without expressly stating that. Um, and then some constraints, the lots are shallow and small. Um, the average lot is 27,000 square foot. That's the average though, it's not the you know, most occurring. Um, one challenge is that multifamily use in the business A district requires a 40,000 square foot lot. So right there you have a lot of lots where you, you can't do multifamily um, without a, a um, variance. Setbacks in lot coverage are limiting. Uh, the shallow lots, um, you know, you have a 30 foot rear yard setback in your lot that's shallow. You don't have much room left. Um, and then lot coverage for multifamily, I think is 20 or 25% in business A. So you really just don't have much to work with. Um, lots about residential to the rear, which can be a challenge for any new development. Um, so you know, like similar to downtown where step backs or, you know, extra accommodations for the residential abutters come into play. Um, one of the main challenges though, I think, is the fact that the lots are split zoned. So um, mostly business A and S15. And the zone extension that we allow, like a 30 foot zone extension of, of business A into the S15 area excludes multifamily. So, we allow multifamily, but then we have all these things that make it extremely difficult to actually develop um, more than two units of housing um, in the upper stories of any of these, um, on any of these lots. And then I mentioned that mixed use is not expressly permitted, but that might not be an issue. Um, I'd have to give that some more thought. And then other constraints, wetlands, wetlands buffers, ledge, topography, um, and then parking and loading. Um, parking for residential was 1.5 and then loading um, you know for commercial so those are challenges to accommodate on on the site so opportunities you guys have the South Main Street design best practices that you've been using during site plan review which is great uh, Main Street I believe is going to be repaved in the spring I certainly hope so they said that last year <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's why I said believe. <laughs> um, and then there is the, the road diet is still on the table, but it's been pushed What's off. What's that mean? Uh, are you familiar with East Arlington? No. Yes, where? So do you know how they narrow, so on, May, on uh, Mass Ave in Arlington? Yeah. They reduced it from like four lanes down to three, and they added bike lanes, and then there's some medians. It's easier yeah, yeah, to cross. Yeah, yeah, it's easier yeah. to be Before a pedestrian. Before the movie theater that way. It's yes, more of a complete yes. street scenario. It's It slows down traffic. It's a little safer. It's a similar kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, the, the simplest way to understand it is the one lane each way directional with a uh, shared uh, turning, lane turning lane in the center. Well, we don't have a, so much use for a, the official bike lanes, really. 
Well, well you build it. it. Yeah. Where are they going to go, though? Are they going to drop themselves into Walmart it's zone? The beginning. It's just the beginning. You have to start somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's the one place where it would make most sense is, in fact, South Main Street. From the from the, the highway and the, the uh, fairly high density stuff, it, um, what used to be Addison Wesley. Oh, so the so from the, the condos. You know, from there up up to the the railroad tracks. I mean, that's the um, effective. Or getting people you know. to Woburn through South Street or something like that. Yeah. I mean, right now, um, I did spot something, some path in Stoneham. I was going to ask people about it. Just it just opened. What is it? Yeah. Where's it called? Like, <laughs> Stoneham, Burn, Winchester. Yes. I've yep. not been on it yet, but someday. Um, and so then another opportunity is there's properties that are right for redevelopment along South Main Street. I heard today that the... Um, Smith Oil. Is it Smith though? I think it's not mm. Smith. It's, it's Smith Oil. Company. Well, is it the Smith, Smith Oil yeah. property? It's the four yeah. acres. Um, yeah, there's. So I don't actually know the total acreage. It might be about four. About four. There's. It's two properties actually. It got um, bought. It got it was. It's going to be redeveloped. I have not heard. I've heard this through like the grapevine. <laughs> I haven't heard from anyone directly who wants to redevelop it, but. Um, that that is a split zoned. It's it's a challenging um, lot with wetlands and topography, and so we'll see. Um, contamination. And contamination, <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably. So, um, and there's some others along South Main Street, mm. uh, such as the one that didn't come before you tonight. But you know, 258 Main Street. Um, they're looking to figure out too. Not this so uh, we always have the opportunity to make some battle amendments. And I throw out some options. Um, look at you know the use table, the dimensional controls, and kind of take a surgical approach and kind of look at section by section like what makes sense. What are we? We a little bit like what we did with the industrial district last year. Um, mm. To you know maybe lot coverage doesn't need to be twenty five percent. Maybe it could be more. Maybe setbacks could be less. Maybe we could do away with the lot size requirement, um, and which I feel limits creativity in some ways. Um, is it one idea I've always had for that area is like a, a shared parking behind, almost like a... Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> yeah, we tried to look at that. Well, we did. That? Yeah, yeah, we did look at that, um, but tried to come up with something. Um, um, if it's commercial, no, don't you run into problems? The, 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 the problem yeah. is the, the sort of the topography yeah. um, and the wetlands, and you really just don't have much room to. I mean, t to me, the biggest issue is that those lots are all so shallow, and yeah. you have no room to work with. And that's what I was um, thinking about. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Instead of just the three behind you, you can actually be right. certain. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we look at the zone extension regulation and allow it to be greater or, I mean, one, because if you do accumulate a number of lots, but then you can only, or if you do get the deeper, but then you can only extend the zone 30 feet. And then you can't do multifamily. And I mean, there's just so many things that are constraining development down on South Main. So um, there's the surgical approach. And then, then I was also thinking, like, maybe we could create an overlay district, um, or maybe a little bit of both. Um, or maybe one thought I had was make the zoning boundaries match the parcel lines. Um, but that's like such a huge overhaul that we should probably do all over town. Um, crazy pie in the sky idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so yeah. So. How about extending the zone into the residential, but for certain uses? Allow them to build the building in the industrial zone but allow parking to go into the residential. Right, so there's mm. different things we can look at, definitely. 
it's all about that buffer, yeah. right? I mean, everywhere, any development in town is all about what happens along that edge. And um, but it is easier yeah. to buffer a parking lot than it is a building. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I, I agree that looking at it more surgically mm -hmm. um, of what are those buffer issues that are along here. Um, that maybe that are more palatable, palatable, and would work along the edges of this section that may not work elsewhere. Or maybe instead of, I mean, maybe just requiring a certain buffer or a certain setback, rather than saying you can only extend the zone this far, because that that that's a st that's like well one size fits all, which doesn't fit all yeah. such scenarios. Um, well, the, I mean, part of the issue is the creating a zoning environment that allows successful development. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, South Main Street isn't that. Right. In other words, there's, 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 yeah, there's, there's, you know, land for lease, there's things that don't work, things, you know, where nobody can, uh, can create a, a viable business. And right. The, the balance between protecting the, the prime residential, which is behind the existing corridor on both sides, and allowing successful businesses, you know, along the main street is something that we haven't figured out how to do yet. Because um, we've got the, the strip of A40 with the, uh, the apartment buildings, you know, on, down there. Yep. And we've got Santander and the little strip malls and, and so on and so forth, which are viable businesses, but not necessarily what we would prefer to have there. Well, it wasn't all that long ago that the setback was, what was it, 50 feet? Yeah. 50 foot setback? I mean, you know, with that, you can't do anything. No, I mean, we did the. You the can't. You know, you get exactly what you get. get we what have. we yeah. have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> and so that development is a function of the zoning that we had yeah. up until you know yeah. what is it? Well, we got. I mean, Calarisos was the PUDB. I mean, we took the commercial properties and combined them and put an overlay on. And, it. Yeah. Well, it was a PUDB, which is a. It's an overlay. I don't know. I don't know if it's an yeah. overlay. Okay. Um, and we've got the whatever it is multifamily hiding between the uh, the gas station and the old wayside bazaar. <laughs> Leaning Elm Drive. Leaning, yeah. Um, Leaning Elm Drive. A series of four multifamily uh, condos, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right or left side towards yeah, town. I'm not Sorry. familiar with this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, as, as you come, as you cross South Street, there's the gas station, and then there's Leaning Elm Drive, because off to the right, off to the uh, east, I guess. Oh, hidden behind the trees. Yeah. 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 The Leaning Elm. Yeah, they have open houses <laughs> in the Elm, and you know those as open you houses south in the going Which yes? direction? This must be north. North. Oh. If you're going north, you're they're on the going left. Going north. Yeah, on Main Street. Oh, I'm never looking over to the left when I'm driving north on Main Street. I'm always just like looking straight in front of me, like. Well, you're looking to the right actually is where. Yeah. You can only see the sign. Yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's like a nice big wooden carved in sign. Yeah. yeah. Gotta open my eyes when I drive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah. So okay, then, so if we are talking about overlay districts, um, see my caveat there. You don't really want a smart road, though. The 40R on South Main Street. Why? Prioritizes housing. Mm, why do we not want it? You Other than say, the, the I don't want to housing. generalize, but I've heard earlier tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that we're good. That I think I think having some housing is good, but the 40R statute is really about multifamily housing with a small amount of commercial. Yes, yes, yes. High density. Yes, yes. This is well. commercial with a small amount of housing. Entirely, it's the opposite. Right. I'm yes. thinking maybe you want the opposite. So, Sorry. so right because what we <coughs> uh, had in terms of a development that we approve that may not get built because of the economics or or other reasons, right? Is the one that just. Um, that, that just delayed um, 
tonight. But if we had something that would have allowed um, multifamily, then maybe like some residential upstairs. Then, well, that's they certainly would have. Boom, we would have a multifamily unit um, building right there, and um, and gone would be another one of our commercial properties. That's to me, that's going the right direction. I see. I see. Yeah, um, making this more residential, but allowing it to be maybe allowing it to be. To have some residential units. So that the first floor um, commercial could work. Right. I have no problem with that. Right. Which um, means we'd need to revisit parking for 40R to increase commercial mm -hmm. parking to make that more viable. Well, yeah. with 40, right, with 40R, you can't, you can't, you have to always allow that um, multifamily development as an option. Well, yeah, so 40R is yeah. either multifamily or mixed use that's majority multifamily. So yeah, it's not, the, the balance isn't quite there, I don't think, yeah. for, for South Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, but there's all sorts of different overlays, and um, I was looking at commercial overlays different commercial overlay districts and it just depends on like what scale how we would define the kind of scale of commercial that we can sustain i don't think we want, want. the scale North Reading, that's going on in north reading right yeah. now Vote oh no. My no but so but it's what's interesting about their oh. main street overlay district is <laughs> the main street overlay district is actually to preserve the quaint character of have you been up to North yeah. Reading? Yeah, quaint character. Yep. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's how the bylaw reads. Gun shop? That like? quaint character? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's <laughs> quaint. <laughs> so anyway. uh, no, you know what I'm talking like about. Been we up go up to Route 62 and, and right. up between Route 62 and the boat. So, oh, yeah, but uh, there's a lovely there's, downtown there's a store, center. Uh, yeah. a, um, that's not Main Street, though. building going up there that is enormous, right on towering. But when I read it, it's it's big. <laughs> That's next to my doctor's office it's building. To preserve I the didn't, point. didn't know what that there. was. Yeah. Of that <laughs> one lovely little area. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Right. Keep that. Right. Yeah. Um, but so I just was looking at some different things like uh, the commercial corridor overlay in Weymouth is actually a very big box and, and they actually want to step back a 50 feet from the street. So that's not not something that really fits. Um, and then there's like neighborhood commercial. Lee has a bylaw. Um, the definition of neighborhood commercial is really sort of commercial that supports the immediate neighborhood. And that's not exactly really what we have going on here either. Um, and then the main street uh, the language in the Main Street Overlay District in North Reading is about preserving the quaint character of the community. So, um, which is probably too small scale in its intent than what we have. So it's kind of, I guess, about figuring out what it is we want to encourage and what scale we can support and what features we would want. So I have a few things. I've been thinking about this since I moved here. So I just, mm -hmm. um, Tony, can you just talk a little bit more about the Calarusos? Like, I wonder if there are some best practices, like the Calarusos development, that we might want to try to uh, replicate and learn from. Because I think that you know that took a lot. The result seems to be what we want to aim for in some ways. Active, <coughs> you know, has an attractive on um, the street front. How much of that is attributed to the design guidelines, though? Um, well, it was it was predate, predating the design guidelines. Did it? Yes. Yeah. Although the design guidelines came I, Right about that same time, right after it. I mean, it was they, they were sort of in that same. Uh, well, af after I believe, but the, the design uh, guidelines were put in place in 2012. I don't know. If yeah, was also still it was done when we first moved here, which was 2012. Okay, so uh, the the 
Um, why that property works better than many others is because it is so deep. It's deep, yeah. yeah. It's very deep. Understood. And it allows for, it's for the, the, um, that, yeah. that, all that parking. I believe it's, um, is it this? No. This part right here? No. Or is it no? It's no, right. Yeah, never mind. It's, 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 the triangle, it's the little triangle there. Um, well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's on the corner of South Street. It's right here. Yep. Okay. But I think that what I heard from this is I think it is both kind of an overall comprehensive approach as well as a strategic approach because of all of the different situation so like the hill is different from the flat and area is different from where the wetlands are is different from where there's um, you know direct mm -hmm. abutting residential but having an overall approach I think it's right here it's this one. Yeah. And, a, and a game plan for what we want to have it look like and where we want to go with it, I think that worked and is working for downtown. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend that we consider that. I think the second thing that I've been thinking about, and I don't know anything about the situation on the state with the street and everything, is that one of the things that I think holds this section back is the, the awful pedestrian situation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's a way to combine, you know, investment in a new property with investment in, you know, streetscape, <laughs> um, and you know, getting some actual curb lines and lighting. And I just, to me, in that, like, it would be one of those things. If you build it, then it could work. You know, people can't picture having a commercial with a couple stories of residential quite yet but if it was more um, pedestrian friendly it might encourage you know, people to picture it better. Well I think two things on or maybe more than two things on that so um, so we definitely had some of that thought before because I know in when we we're looking at when we we're working through those design guidelines there was that issue about how do you um, how do you address that front area and create a better pedestrian environment um, and, and more connectivity up and down the street? Um, and um, uh, but I'll turn your attention to the building that's being constructed right now. 306 Main Street. Um, where? Um, no. Oh no, that one. The, one the, the insurance. The one that was supposed to be a pizza restaurant, but it's yeah, now. It's yeah, now it's now like an insurance building. Building. So that is pulled way up into the way yeah. up to the street, yeah. which is what we wanted. Um, but I think that will be interesting because um, that's like Calarisos. That's one of the few buildings that will be that close. And what can you do with that space? It's dedicated to pedestrian, the pedestrian environment. So if you have, uh, my take is if you have that, then um, more and more along that along the stretch, then suddenly you're not walking along a, a, Waste. a wasteland <laughs> in between. Yeah, in between cars rushing by you yeah. and, yeah. and parked cars. Yeah. You know that you're worried are gonna you know mm -hmm. roll out or whatever. Like it's the, more it's so, at least softer on one side, so the cars whizzing right. by you is. You know, is, in, in the best of all possible worlds, we would have. Um, a number three or four feet worth of tree lawn you know there'd be curb there'd be tree lawn there'd be a sidewalk so that you're not your shoulder isn't getting, getting clipped yeah. by somebody's suv yeah. uh, and that means that the that's that's your your 10 foot plus setback right from the um, the highway line right and for most of the stretch uh, it's physically a challenge to do that. So it's, it's not unless, something. Yeah, unless the state unless it's does the diet or whatever yeah. <laughs> on the street. I, I mean, I just there's 
it's just a question, you know, just looking at this and remembering about uh, tax increment financing, which is never going to happen in this town, but it's an interesting concept that the more that you invest in, you take that and reinvest it into you know, things like street, streetscape and pedestrian improvements so that it becomes a nice virtuous cycle. It would be interesting as that zone, let's try it as an example, if we can, you know, do some strong developments in that area, take the benefits from it to reinvest it, to make it more pedestrian friendly and bike friendly. And then, right. You know, but I understand that it's not. Yeah, and I mean, I think the repaving project is really only going to be the street traveled way too. Is there they're no way we can get even just like real curbs? There's on a road <laughs> safety audit and a curb cut study that are in various stages um, to look at the pedestrian environment and the number of curb cuts and the, a way to sort of improve that. Um, I don't think I've had an update on that in two years, though. Kind of just died, so I'll have to find out from the town engineer where that ended up. There was the state had hired a consultant to do it. Um, and we talked about a number of intersections and improvements that could be made two I mean, years ago. I, I know it's a sore subject, but you know the improvement to West Street was just one side of strong sidewalks is pretty significant, I mm -hmm. think. Right. You know, there's an, on the, the map that you've got up there, there's this interesting gap. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking that. Oh, like, that's the AG that that's very What is interesting. that? That's residential. Yeah, it's just the residential goes all the way up to the street. And that's where we've got one of the... Can you show me what street that is? That's it's Cross that. Street right here. It's and, Cross. Um, oh, it's somewhere. It's mobile. Yeah. It it mobile. Those are like... Yeah, this is the mobile yeah. station right here. Okay, so yeah. that's my house. So and then I, th I think there's actually a slope. Yeah, it goes down. Yeah. It slopes down. So there's two... Where's your house, Rachel? I'm, I'm behind over this, but that's my intersection. That's okay. where I am every day. So at least one of the ones on the left-hand side is... Abandoned, I think. Along here? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That one, two, three, maybe? That one? The long, skinny one? With like a. This one? Yeah. Well, my understanding, and I don't know why I have this understanding, but you know, it, it, when zoning went into into effect um, in 1942, the idea was to create zones where um, development already was, and not use it as a tool, but like, okay, this is our, we have all the commercial development here, and it's residents, and then this commercial, because why else would you leave that? And right. so, you know, yeah. back in 1942, that was a little residential node. Um, and this and, is an apartment building. Um, and and <laughs> we have perpetuated that, right. and, you know, I guess I've always thought, since I've moved here, is do we really want, I mean, do those property owners want to that perpetuated? Beyond, yeah. Does the town want that to be perpetuated as, as a residential half a block? Um, a good portion of them are two to three families also, more. There's really, because the white, the white house on the corner of Cross, that's like the strongest house, like that big huge one there. Oh, this one right yeah. here, with the big lawn. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, and the, the big blue one on the corner, which I'm unclear. This one, on this no, corner? on the Summer Ave uh, top, right. yeah, that one, the big blue one there. I think that's a multifamily, but I'm unclear. I think almost all of the, the rest of them are multifamilies. Success is one, which doesn't always mean it's one, but it's so yeah. It doesn't have that many cars. That's why yeah, I think it's. Probably I think it one. might be a single. So, point being, it's not the most vigorously uh, defended houses. Yeah. I think is my yeah. guess. 
uh, the, that white one will never move. I guarantee. Can, you, can you can you just click down through those parcels on Business A so we can see how much they overlap? I mean, how much they spill into behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that one decent. These all are. These are actually the, some of the it's deeper strong. ones that we have. Um, Where's that? Is that Harrow's? What is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I guess there's two little ones right here. Let's fit this together. And then here's yeah. Calaresso's. Yeah. <coughs> and then on this side, we have some more. Um, and that's Leaning Elm. And something new every day. Um, we say bizarre. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. yeah. That's just a small bit. Meineke. Yeah. That's a big That's section. a crazy big building. There. And so, and multifamily is not allowed in the S15 district. Mm -hmm. So that's why the zone extension, well, which doesn't help because it doesn't include multifamily, it's just not a helpful thing um, if you want to have more than two units along here. Um, so that's long and skinny. Mm -hmm. and the problem is any changes you make to these, you, these uh, properties for zoning, if you want to expand it, the issue isn't the expanding on these guys, it's the expanding on the people who will buy it. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking about, it. yeah. So it's like that T-shape. Mm -hmm. They really, they would love it if you could expand it, but I'll guarantee you, the people behind them, not so much. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the that's the whole issue is, is, that, is that buffer. Right. Um. You'd almost have to have some sort of transitional area where, say, if you were butting it, you could have two families in an S-15 or something to that effect, where you could give them something for what they're losing. Jimmy, what's the big empty space in the middle? Is it town forest there? <laughs> it's a resource. Slug lane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm not seeing what you're doing. Where, you're, where your mouse is right now. Oh, right here? No. No. no where? In the behind the oh, oh, yeah. are just guards. They're, they're guards, backyards. Yeah. 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 Um, they might be um, wet because there are some wetlands back there. No, it's too high. Oh, so the wetlands are further out. Well, it, the street, yeah. it drops down dramatically right next to dynamic school. Yeah, there's right. wetlands. It's all wet back here. But this, oh, you were not talking about that. Yeah, yeah. so that is up on the Yeah, this yeah. is dry. Yeah. Okay, that's ledge. That's the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right, yeah. Um, so, the, I mean, there's challenges, so many challenges. So I guess the second thing is to, so maybe what it is is about lot assembly. Like this is the prime area that you're not going to go backwards. <laughs> you need to go sideways. So what are the, the zoning levers that we can pull to help assemble lots that way? <laughs> They're so well, shallow. Then you get That's in, what I'm saying. Yeah. So, but if it, instead of, you can't develop well, from this little tiny one here, if you had three of them, we could, you have a little bit of a difference. This is where you get to the buffer issue, because if you reduce the rear yard setback so that the lots, you know, the shallow lots don't aren't as constrained, then you have less of a buffer to the residential abutters in the back. Um, and once again, you have to, to come up with something where somebody has a business that would fit and thrive there and that's a challenge i mean we're struggling to to uh, to keep the businesses we have i mean this this is 
probably one of the reasons why the zone lines have never been changed to match the parcel lines because of the abutting, uh, the impacts on the butters. But mind you, that is the reason why South Main Street is not successful because yeah. what's built can only be what right. all we can build there, all anyone right. can build there are narrow little buildings that are yeah. auto oriented and, and especially in this day and age sort of only marginally worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, so if we want what we have, then we keep what we have. <laughs> right. Mm. Um, and, and I guess my other statement would be that are we confident that the, so right now the way that we, we create that buffer to the, the, the neighbors in the back is <coughs> by this goofy zoning arrangement. Um, uh, and I think where we started out with this was, are there other ways we can get that same buffer function with not so goofy of a zoning piece and, and, and allow for better development, but still keep them, keep right. a, a, a right. the, the function of a buffer there. Mm. So I think like an overlay that matched lot lines that had language about buffers could achieve could that. Check. Yeah. A carefully worded. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, probably heresy to, to mention it, but I mean, the Moody Street in Waltham, mm -hmm. where you've got basically a, a, a streetscape and all of the <coughs> parking and buffering is behind it. But it's always been like that, though. Yeah. Since the 50s. I mean, but that's the kind of thing that, that in theory, could yeah. Um, yeah. survive could work. Yeah. Um, yeah, along agree. South Main. But it's alien to Reading, if you will. <laughs> it, it, because I would think that, that it's easier to buffer cars parked back there or the Uber that goes back there <laughs> or what have you in the future than, um, than what we were trying to be, do before was mm -hmm. push the whole building back. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the, the design guidelines that we have were aimed at that kind of thing. With the, that's why they've got the uh, buildings pushed towards the street. And, um, we just need more properties to turn over and come in and so that we can to utilize the design yeah. guidelines and you know it's, yeah. it's but, like the chicken and egg but we still but what we didn't address is what you're pointing out right there is that even with that right because that was now some six years ago Seven and years ago. yeah and there's a lot of development going on right now and no one's you know very okay. few yeah very few bites there um, and is that, I guess the question is, is that because of the narrow lots? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I can't say for sure, but I'm sure it doesn't help. And, you know, we have had a few redevelopments of Doyen's, but they used an existing building, so that building is still set back. Right. We still have a yeah. sea of parking in front. And, Mm -hmm. 258 Main Street project that you guys worked so hard on is getting changed and mm -hmm. um, 306 Main Street got modified how many times? Twice? Three times? It finally is getting built. What's up, the office building? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that one's that one's constrained. The lot size and location is constrained by the wetlands, the Walker's Brook. Um, which was, I mean, it, they didn't have the option to for taking a bigger location because of the right. wetland constraint. So. But isn't that kind of an issue with every single lot? If you really wanted to do something with there, I mean, look at the size of Calaruso's lot versus every other lot on Main Street. Yeah. I mean, that is huge. Yeah. That's three to four times the size of most of the lots. Mm -hmm. 
And on, and on top of that, they can't even use the back half. Right. Was that because of this? The no, they zone. have an overlay. And why is that? <coughs> it must be what the restrictions are on the PUDB, right? Or is it wet? It, well, there's no, a big, um, there's a big um, that's a dip. Uh, retaining oh, it's a basin down there. And right. it all, uh, everything... Uh, right. Yeah, it all goes back to there. That's, right. that's, that's what that whole space is used for. Yeah. <clears throat> and really, most development today is nothing but big buildings. Nobody wants to put up a small, call it even three-store strip mall. I, I'm going to put up 20, 50 stores, whatever it is. So should we come back with some ideas? What are you, are, are you guys leaning to maybe some surgical and some holistic? Or... Yeah, and that's why some saying. smart improvements, or I shouldn't say improvements, because there's always unintended consequences. But maybe some um, changes to the sections of the zoning bylaw that it seem to be. Wait, limited. do you know why it says the zone boundary can't be extension can't be used for multifamily? Like you know what I mean? Uh, I, mean I assume it's all about buffering, right? I don't know. <clears throat> um, I well, guess the I mean, other thing that Tony brought up is that, um, that would be um, interesting to look at that sort of zoomed in, maybe not right now, but, you know, is look at where are, what's the wetland and what's the wetland buffer that they With couldn't that, develop. Right. So what is that developable property right. anyhow? Right. Um, And how much, and you know, how much do any of those property owners have to play with in the first place? Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. What Could did you, you click on the Smith Oil to see where that goes? Yeah. Just um, that's a prime. It's a piece. Because that's just a wetland, right? That you just no. turned on, and then on top of that, you have a, a buffer. Is <laughs> in. It's further up. Yeah. 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 I know it's split. And no, I'm, no, it's um, that's right. It's after cross. Yeah, no. no, no. I thought it had been more. There's a triangle at the front. No. Is it this? There. It's yes. There, yeah. Ooh. Yes. It's a triangle, and then they also it's this piece too. Yep. And the green is wetland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's it's A40 and S15. And covered in wellness. So why do you have to? <laughs> do you end it up? So it's you'd be paying taxes for this whole area that you can't do anything with. Dually oil. That's why I thought it wasn't. Oh. Right. Okay. Sorry. What, what are you saying, Rachel? So that's a huge lot that mm -hmm. you can't do anything with. <clears throat> Sixty to seventy percent of. Mm -hmm. So why not? deed that back to the town. The Conservation Commission works works with people to make things like that happen. I mean, I Conservation not want to pay happen. taxes or be responsible um, for that much land that I can't use. And maybe, that, maybe whatever development comes along with that property, that will be part of the deal. Um, and maybe there'll be a trail, or I don't. I don't know what it looks like back there. Right, and then so if the, I mean this is a sort of right there. Well, every property is odd, right? But right. that has a built-in buffer. Right. There's no reason why if the front half was well, the front half is a forty. There's no reason why that back the middle piece can't be a forty. Right here. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right. I mean the. Right. Except for it can't be used for multi-family housing. <laughs> the zone extension. Except for that. No, no, no. But if that was right, if that right. was extended, then that was a forty. Just you'd have your buffer. You'd have. There's no. There's no reason for that whole property not to be um, a forty with some kind of buffer in the back. Right. Um, uh, except that the line doesn't go there. Right. right. And that's just bureaucratic. Like that's just that doesn't make any sense. Let's just do away with the zoning bylaw. 
No, it's not, it's not the zoning bylaw. No, it's, it's, the, it's the zoning right, map. It's at some point someone drew a line, right? Right. And I know. which made sense when that was drawn. Maybe. I was just alluding to the lawsuit. Maybe. It was easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, for wetland conservation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they age a lot. Yeah. I would say I'm all for surgicals. Yeah. Like looking like looking. But surgical but with an overarching kind of comprehensive approach and a plan and a like where we want to go to. I was just looking at the ULI healthy corridors. <coughs> too urban for us. Mm -hmm. But it right. still has some gen generic principles that we could try to So are you thinking a little bit of both? Because well, it's, it looks, I mean, it looks like we need zoning map changes mm -hmm. yeah. yes. along, mm -hmm. you know, coordinated with some, maybe, um, zoning bylaw changes. Or, or is that an overlay? Or, well, it's, I, I mean, I, I would just go ahead and change the map, I mean, where, where it makes sense. I mean, the overlays are, um, <sighs> pain, in the end, pain in the neck. <laughs> but the existing regulations maybe aren't great either, the existing zoning, so. Right. Well, that's what I say. I mean, overlays are nice in the sense that, like, we could have it match property lines. We could, we can kind of write it from fresh. And we don't take anything away. And we don't render a bunch of things non-conforming that aren't currently. Do you know what I mean? I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, except that there's no penalty for being non-conforming if it's existing. Well, there that's, is not, to that's not exactly yeah. true. That's not exactly true. So, I mean, you, you know, not without getting into the legality of it. People who are non-conforming or have non-conforming uses or structures have to go through other processes when they want to change things. Mm -hmm. If your house burns down and you don't reconstruct it or you know, you're know you demolished it and then you go bankrupt and can't rebuild it and it's non-conforming after two years, technically you lose the right to it. I mean, there's, there's it gets complicated. Right. Um, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, but we have we have a mixture of, of problems of our own creation I mean, between the uh, zone existing the zone boundaries and the topography and so on and so forth. Right. All right. So we'll we'll come back. January might be a busy, but we'll come back. Um, with some more, and also um, the design guidelines for the 40R district downtown. I haven't heard, I haven't gotten any more feedback from you guys. Um, what else do we, like, I think we're not sure what. Okay, so I'll come back. We haven't seen an updated design yeah. guideline. Right. What's next? Anyway. Right, so I, I'm working on it, and I was thinking I was going to maybe get some more feedback, but working on it we'll bring it back meanwhile the pink building is no more i know i was Sam there actually Sam the day they were painting <laughs> <laughs> i was like <laughs> yes <laughs> we were all happy all right that's good okay so i'd like to see in, in terms of this corridor uh some eye to enhancing the look and feel of it in a homogenized way you talked about uh, Moody Street has a certain look and feel in Waltham. I'd love it, love it if we had more trees down the road. Yes. Uh, just, just, just a thought. A couple more trees. Well, that so is that in the design is, guidelines. Yes. And <laughs> actually, that, that, put, that does, uh, right, some of this is not intuitive. If you push the, if you push the buildings forward, so that then they can't be used, that space can't be used for parking, 
then it gets used for landscaping. Yes. Tree, tree lines. Yes. Tree, tree lines. lines. Yeah. And right. right. And the trees, like, in this stretch, which is, you know, a state-owned road, the trees would have to be on the properties that, rather right. than on the street. True. Um, I just, you know, like yeah, no, it's yeah. definitely, I definitely agree with that. We um, pushed hard for those trees at, or, right, Jean worked very hard for those trees in front of, um, um, Burton oh, King. Yeah, the linear properties. <laughs> um, yeah. Trees, yeah. They yeah, they wanted to move they, on. No, they're, 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 they're not, they're they're not they're huge. Yeah. They're not huge. Yeah, they wanted to take one down so the sign would be more visible, and no, that was not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, like to me, it's negotiation with the state that there should be actually tree line, tree line street. I yep. mean, that, that would be a significant improvement. And if you think about that stretch, it never that's not where things get backed up. Right. So you could reduce it down to what you were mentioning with three lanes. Mm -hmm. It gets backed up starting at Burger King. Okay, so let's just mm -hmm. recap real quick for my um, sake. We'll prioritize South Main Street and um, the floodplain. Mm -hmm. Didn't you say the other one also has implications? Um, yeah, when I, I have to revisit and remind myself what they are. Um, the floodplain's definitely like the most restrictive. That's probably the yeah. biggest issue with that area. Um, so those will be the two priorities with this as a, I'll, I'll take a look at the PUD use changes and try to remind myself what I was thinking of. This, this is from a couple of years ago. Um, and then we'll, I'll come back with more information for you on footnote one and an idea on the lot shape, what to do about that. Because I, I think we should be able to solve that, the lot shape. Yeah, probably pre pretty easily. Pretty easily. Yeah, I'm shocked yeah. that, that mm -hmm. we did that originally. No one with that. But. Yeah, the, the form-based code is something that, I mean, Nick talked about on a regular basis and I still have no idea what he's talking about. I just was looking but. at that. Sorry, here. Yeah, these last two I didn't really talk about. Uh, um, Form-based code might be something to look at for any like zoning changes in the PUD area. Hmm. Um, and I don't know to what extent, like, so we, are you aware that Andrew wrote a grant application in the summer when I was out and we received it? So because we're a housing choice community, we received a grant from the state for $50,000 um, to work with a consultant to do a feasibility analysis of redeveloping the new crossing road oh. area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Possibly. I'm not sure to what extent they'll take a look at these, right. the zoning mm -hmm. challenges and come up maybe with some ideas for mm -hmm. us. So that's supposed to kick off um, January. So that, you know, it'll kind of dovetail with, with looking into the zoning down there, so. Um, all right, can I just re I read this? It's form-based code, it's regulation, not a guideline. Mm -hmm. As such, it's a means of regulating land development to achieve a specific urban form and to create a destination in an area. Unlike traditional zoning, which is based on separation of uses, FBCs use physical form as the organizing principle of design and development to create a high-quality public realm. An FBC is adopted into city, town, or co county law and is a powerful alternative to conventional zoning regulations. Benefits to developers include faster than normal approval of their plans, lower risk of residents opposing projects, and potential of increasing density of the project. So I hear good things and challenging things in that description. <laughs> okay. So I, I need to look it up to understand what, how it's different from well, okay. zoning, zoning, you regulate <laughs> uses. the uses. Right. Form-based form -based codes, you you regulate the form. So yeah. you presume that, and yeah. The so relationship that, of everything. Yes, it's form versus function. Okay. 
I'll tell you what, the, it, gold, the, gold, gold, markets, the gold markets on an apartment building. My take <laughs> is that it presumes that, um, that the uses are all going to be um, c uh, compatible with each right. other mm -hmm. within the forms that you designate. So in, um, in a downtown where the forms you create are um, either, you know, are office form or a, or a um, uh, apartment form, I don't know, generally you don't care which it is next to each, you know, that all works. Mm. Um, uh, uh, what I'm fearful of in a place in a more suburban environment is, y yeah, someone may come along with a um, with a um, self storage uh, uh, form, you know, self storage use in downtown, in in downtown, right? I, to me, in this environment, we're not. It's not. We're not as sure as we're going to get on different in the different forms that we can create. I think there's too much variability. Mm. That's my take on. Okay. Yeah, that's on. Okay that in this type of environment. Okay. And okay, so that sounds good. Got my marching orders. <laughs> good. <laughs> Thanks guys. Is that all? Is that all we have? All for oh, you? you wanted an update, sorry. Um yes. so yeah let me just start. let's switch places. Yeah. <laughs> that way for a minute. Oops. Um, so, Town Council is taking the lead on this. Uh, the lawsuit, as you probably know, was against CPDC, Meadowbrook, and the town. Um, so, Town Council's working with NZBA, right? Uh, no, so there's two separate things. They oh. appealed your site plan decision. And in uh, section four of the zoning bylaw, the appeals of site plan decisions go to the zoning board. So the zoning board will be reviewing Meadowbrook's go new golf club, um, new clubhouse, sorry. Um, and town council's gonna be there. Uh, we're gonna set up a coordination meeting. I think it's next, next week, day. right? Yeah. yeah, so Nick, even Nick will be there in the chair. Um, the zoning board and town council and staff and we'll kind of hammer out the issues and um but town council will be taking the lead on representing you guys and your opinions and the decision also um to the zoning board and then there's the other piece which is the lawsuit against you guys the town and meadowbrook and town council is working with meadowbrook's council um to have the appeal thrown out sorry to have the lawsuit thrown out because they've also appealed it to the zoning board, which is the proper course. Um, and they didn't provide really any sort of um, substantial grounds for the lawsuit. Any, um, I could use terms he used, let's see. Um, it's, they're hoping that it will be dismissed as premature the plaintiff asks for a declaration that the bylaw is invalid, but provides no explanation whatsoever to support this claim. Um, so. so what stage was it? And that's what I was confused at. It looked like it had been to a judge and had proceeded. Mm -hmm. No. OK, no. that's why I was trying yeah. to understand. No, we, and I was surprised, actually, you just got it in the mail. Because we got it. Um, Right before Thanksgiving, I think yeah. we were made aware of it. Yeah, the date so it took some time. To mm -hmm. The date was the twenty sixth. We to you got guys. it on Saturday. <coughs> but you, you should not have to do anything. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> um, <coughs> well, I got both the November twenty sixth, and I got something dated December seventh. Today, right? Yeah. yeah. I got them both today. So, they're filing a motion to dismiss. If the motion is granted, the case will be over and the ZBA appeal will continue. If the motion is not granted, then Town Council and uh, Meadowbrook's Council will, will file an answer and first continue with the case. But you guys will not really need to be involved at all. 
You're welcome you to attend the ZBA hearing. Uh, and if you're planning on it, let me know and I'll um, post you guys. Well, if the ZBA fined for Meadowbrook, then the, um, Mr. Marco, no, uh, the, no, Bonanno, mm -hmm. who's filing it, could then appeal that decision and then it starts all over again. So yes, it's good. it could right. be thrown out because it's too premature because but the ZBA could, hasn't finalized it. But it could all come back. It but could it's, all, right, definitely. But it's very well, and it probably will come back if it's found for Meadowbrook. Right. I would not. Yeah. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But did they put a cease and desist order on any demolition of the current clubhouse and any construction? I didn't see they're, that. I mean, they're not going to. I mean, in my experience, when something's you know under appeal, the applicant does not go forward. I mean, they can't. They're not going to get a demo permit. They're not going to. I mean, if they if they do, I'd be surprised, and it's totally at their own risk. Okay. Um, and my understanding is that's how it works now. In the old days, it was. Yeah. If you appealed it, it was on hold until. Uh, now it you can go forward, but you're going forward at your own risk. So if by some occurrence it actually is found that we've overstepped our authority and we should never have granted it, in theory they could be required to pull down the brand new building they just built. Right, and I mean, also Pam, it's barely been a month since it was approved. Um, and so they haven't come in with any building permit application no, or demo permit everything we saw going back like that. five and six months ago said that construction wanted to start in November. Well, but so then they didn't actually file their application yeah. to come yeah. forward. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah like, they're not. It's probably going to be a while, and in that time, the appeal will play out. Um, e even, if, right, without any of this, when, when they left this room, and they said that they wanted to start construction so that they could get it done before next um, season. season. <laughs> that right. was completely unrealistic. To, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I figured this they meant a year yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, this is 18 right. months worth of construction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it usually takes a while for these things to get started because of financing and you know, whatever else yeah. they have to figure out in the meantime. Right. right. Um, so yeah, I mean, as we, we rarely ever see a project that gets approved and gets a permit within <laughs> like a month or two, a building permit. Mm. Um, it's, it's rare. I, I find the whole thing, I mean, just absolutely no basis for <laughs> the complaint. I don't understand this at all, but. Just, that's that's okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No Nick tonight? <laughs> Move to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.